time for another club webinar. We're already on number 47. Soon we'll be hitting 50. We should celebrate and make that a really special one, I think. Our club webinars, if this is your first time joining us, it's where we take questions that you have asked and we expand on them. Um, they predominantly have I started to say very similar themes, but here lately we've been getting some unique questions and it's been fun to research them. If you want more information on how to join our club, it's real easy to find us. It's at cco.us forward slash club. And we just launched a new format today, so I encourage you to go check it out. So what topic do we have for today? Well, we're going to talk about coding tips on cardiovascular op reports. Um, I am a huge fan of Z Health, and I was using their text, one of their many texts, to um, compile some coding tips. And because we keep getting questions about um, specific coding areas. Now, if you're interested in CEUs, that's great because you can get really interesting and fun CEUs from content like what you're going to see in just a few minutes from our cco.us forward slash club. Um, when you join our club, you get webinar support. So all of our club members that are attending tonight, uh, they get the transcript and they get the slide deck. They also uh, can go in and ask questions in the club about what we went over. But what's really nice about the club is that they don't have to worry about seeing it uh, live. They can go back and look at it anytime they want. It stays up in the club. There are, again, a wide variety of things that we discuss, both billing and coding and the business aspect of medicine. You get extended product support, and it's quite a community, a lot of fun to be in there interacting with everybody. This is the uh, information where I, uh, where I obtained most of the information that we're going to talk about tonight. This is from Dr. Z's Medical Coding Series. I have talked about this particular text before, and I'm sure that when I did, it may still be up on YouTube. I don't know if uh, if it is, but it's definitely in the club. There is the link to be able to find Z Health Publishing, and that's what you need to look at, Z Health Publishing. The one text that we're going to look at, I didn't realize that icon was going to be so small, but it's vascular and endovascular surgery coding reference textbook. And uh, I should say reference book. It's not really a textbook. Uh, it's not like you got question and answers and in it, but the format that they use to walk you through procedures and how to use these codes. They don't just tell you about uh, the codes. They will give you the report and then they'll put the codes up next to the uh, documentation within the documentation. I love that format. That really resonates with me. So again, I encourage you to check in with them. At the end tonight, I also put in the links and the resources where you can join uh, Z Health and uh, become a member with them. You can also uh, a link for their their uh, different books that they have and seminars that they provide. They do live seminars. They do uh, seminars kind of like remote like what we're doing tonight, but uh, they're based out of Tennessee and fabulous. I haven't gotten to, I was going to attend one last year and it, it kind of fell through. Some of the things prevented me from going, but I am going to go because I know several people that have and they said it's fabulous, the education that you get from there. So that being said, we're going to work through some of their suggestions. And this is a fact uh, number five that they got off of uh, that they format that they kind of used. And uh, I thought this was a really good tip to give you because when I see some questions coming in, this is something that a lot of people don't realize. And I have found myself uh, 
uh, scrambling to find a code only to find out, hey, wait a minute, you can't use this code for, for this particular facility. Uh, I don't know if you've had to run into that, but this just gives you a tip in looking beyond just the code. The tip was, if a CPT code is reportable, that doesn't mean everyone can use it. Now, all the little icons that you see off to the side of your C in your CPT manuals and there's notes, they usually give you a heads up. But nowhere really around this code does it tell you in it. Well, let me let me backtrack that. The coding manual doesn't tell you whether you're going to get paid or not. The coding manual is just the the book that gives you the language you're translating everything into for procedures, well, for ICD and for CPT, but well, as we're talking about CPT, you know, it, it it's not up to the text or the AMA whether you're gonna get paid or not for that or, or when you can and cannot use that code uh, as far as things beyond, uh, is, is it the appropriate code, right? They'll give you all the guidelines about that. Now, so what I'm trying to say is this, there's an example that they gave and I thought, wow, I think people don't realize this. Now, this is not a discussion for new coders. This is a, a topic about after you get out there and if you're doing interventional radiology, uh, cardiology, if you've got your CCC or your uh, CERT credential through the uh, AAPC or if you're a CCS through AHEMA and you're doing cardiovascular work, this is an example of a code that you might not be able to use. So when you look at the code itself, it 37215, it's transcatheter placement of intravascular stents. Notice a uh, cervical carotid artery, open or percutaneous, including angioplasty when performed and radiological supervision and interpretation with distal embolic, embolic protection. Now, that there's nothing in there that really red flags or says that that would be above and beyond something that when you're doing all the other codes surrounding there that it couldn't be done. I mean, it's just a um, intervascular stent, you know, being placed. Uh, it is the carotid artery. Okay, well, uh, uh, you know, what, what makes that so special? But the fact is, is that uh, CPT is, uh, saying, you know, here is the the code, but in reality, that code 37215 for that transcatheter placement of a stent, an intervascular stent, it's not, you're not able to use that unless the facility has special uh, credentials for it. So in other words, they have to have the right uh, training for the facility. They have to have the right providers that have been trained to do this particular procedure. And they have to go through a accreditation program to do that. And it's not a small task. Now, if you're pumping out these, uh, if, you, if you have certain, I, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do it. Just because you have a cardiology center or you have cardiology providers at the hospital, the facility, does not mean they're credentialed to do this procedure, okay? Um, and there is a difference in being a cardiologist and being an interventional uh, radiologist or an interventional specialist for cardiology because um, it, it it's like subspecialties. So, you know, you're a provider, you're a doctor, and you specialize in cardiology, okay? But then your subspecialty is interventional uh, procedures, interventional radiology, interventional cardiology. And so uh, you'll see that when you see the differences in the CCC credential and the CIRCC, because that's an interventional cardiology coding uh, credential. That all being said, just because the code's there doesn't mean that if you bill it, you can use it. So what does that mean to the coder? Well, it may look like, or you may think, oh, that, that may be the right code, but if you pick that code and it's not the proper code, and, and one of the reasons it might not be the proper code is because you don't actually do this specific 
procedure because you're uh, not your facility isn't credentialed for that or you don't have a provider that's credentialed for that you're not going to get reimbursed for it so we need to make sure that you're educated in the right translation for the code that you need and find out if there are other codes that sound similar or, or in that particular area where you're looking that may not uh, be available to you to use for those specific reasons. So kind of think outside the box. You may not have known. Uh, one group in your facility that's going to be able to help you with that type of thing is going to be your compliance office. They're going to be able to tell you right away that no, we're not credentialed to that. Uh, going on about going a little more in depth into what 37215 was. Again, I said, you know, it looks like what's the big deal? Oh, and I wanted to mention also, you, you probably are thinking, why do you have that underlined and why do you have that highlighted? That's our bat technique that Laureen um, came up in the 90s. So whenever I show a CPT code, it's just easier now to show you how we would um, do the bubble and highlight the underlining any annotations that we put with the code. So when you look at your manuals, you open up your manual, or if you're using an encoder and you can put a note with your code, if you bring up 37215 uh, in your manual, underline cervical carotid artery because that's what makes the codes around it different is by where uh, you're doing the procedure, what part of the vascular system and everything behind the semicolon should be highlighted with distal em, um, embolic protection. Mm. So again, uh, you're going to see that as we go through uh, because that's what's going to make those codes pop up for you when you're testing or when you're just trying to pick out the, the code at the higher specificity. So again, I went to find a code and I thought, what really makes this code so different? You know, what is it about it versus another one? And the only thing I could I could look at and say, oh, okay, so what ultimately they do with this, part of it I think is is the it's the cervical carotid artery, but um, this is the the after the semicolon, the distal embolic protection. I don't think I think that's very specific. So they actually go past the lesion or where they're going to put the, the stent and whatever they're going to do. And they do their angioplasty probably. And here is a list um, from Find a Code how they do that. And at the very end, it states, by the way, uh, if you use 37215, and then explains what it is again, and you're placing it with that protection, protection device, uh, 37216 when the procedure is performed without that uh, protected protection device. So I think that's what makes that code stand out. This, this uh, protection device is very specific and they have to be trained on that. Now I could be wrong, so I appreciate if you are familiar with this code in this particular procedure, feel free, let us know what you um, have learned about it so that we can share with each other and and um, uh, increase our knowledge base. But the main thing that I'm wanting to get across is unless you have a special facility that does some of these procedures, then again, it's not the right code to use for your, um, the, the provider isn't actually doing this code, right? Or he, he has to be credentialed to do it and the facility has to be credentialed to allow it to be done, okay? Special training. And if one of your providers is and one of your providers is not trained, again, you know, get with your compliance officer, make sure that you understand properly. It's not the only code out there like that, but I didn't want to, um, you know, go out and do a big search on that. It could be something that you might want to do is expand your knowledge and also treat uh, teach the coders in your office about some codes that, hey, we're not credentialed in, at our facility at this time to do this code. Uh, wanted to give you a little bit more education as well from this code, and then you can go from, you know, uh, 
this uh, looked at CPT assistant and they had uh, this article come up in, from 2013 that talked about this placement. And it said just a summary of what 37215, that it's selective catheter placement. Okay, that's, you know, uh, the imaging is uh, done, but they also use radiological supervision and interpretation. That's all included uh, when the provider who's specially been trained to do this, um, uh, they're including imaging access and they uh, confirm the need for carotid stenting in the documentation. Uh, if they put an additional stent uh, in more than just that distal internal carotid that that the uh, 37215 lists uh, that says there it says an additional stent in the more distal internal carotid artery in the rare occasion that that's required um, that can be used but what it doesn't include the 37215 is uh let's see imaging when carotid stenting is not included okay so again go look up that cpt assistant there was a, a whole list of things that they were talking about those codes but that was pertinent to uh, the only reason why i could think that that would be a unique code but anyway thank you to c health for mentioning that it really uh, popped for me when i saw that it's like oh wow mind blown poof i wasn't even thinking about certifications because I don't code cardiology on a regular basis. I get exposed to it here and there. But um, again, if you're working for an interventional radiology cardiology unit, then your, your group is probably certified. So find out. Number two tip that um, came straight from uh, Z Health. And again, we want to give full attribution to them. Uh, we had gotten some questions that came in about doing procedures to the heart and it wasn't a genetic complication or anomaly it was actually a wound like a trauma and great education was there so going to give you some tips about that so whenever you look at wounds of the great vessels and the heart, when we talk about the great vessels, we mean the aorta or the superior vena cava is, and inferior vena cava, that's kind of what you're talking about with those great vessels. Uh, if you have a wound and it's caused by trauma, again, not something congenital, you know, uh, then there's a specific area of codes for that. And we're gonna go over those because that was requested. Uh, blunt injuries, just highlighting when you have a moving vehicle accident uh, the ER doc wants to know and the ambulance and and you know the the first responders they're trained to put that in their report where was the patient in the vehicle you know whether it is a motorcycle accident whether it's a public transportation uh, whether it was a just a regular you know a, a pickup truck if it was a, a car if it was a minivan you know which you don't really see minivans like we used to again if it's a moving vehicle accident where was the patient were they driving were they the passenger up front or were they the passenger in the back if they were in the passenger in the back were they behind the driver or the passenger side okay the reason they want to know is because uh, statistics have shown us what type of trauma happens to the the people in moving vehicle accidents not only do they want to know where you were located uh, what type of vehicle you were in uh, whether it what type of uh, road it was on so was this this moving vehicle accident happen on a gravel road or did it happen on the interstate or was it on a rural highway you know all of that makes a difference because it tells us what speed you were probably going and what type of traffic was involved um, whether you you know and then the next thing they were going to know want to know is how how did it happen was it a rollover or was there safety belts used uh, did the airbag deploy was it a head-on collision was it or were they rear-ended the particular patient that they're treating was it a side impact were they t-boned all of that tells the provider very quickly 
what injuries they can expect because statistically they've been trained. So if you say that this was a uh, driver of a uh, Corvette on the interstate that um, uh, hit, uh, that rear-ended uh, a car in front of it. Okay, so that tells you approximately how fast it was going. It was a Corvette, and eh, that's all fiberglass. We're gonna definitely, and the driver, chest injuries, right? Blunt force trauma because the steering wheel goes into their chest. If it's an older vehicle, it probably doesn't have, if it's a Corvette, it's not gonna probably have airbags um, unless it's, you know, relatively new. And I can't remember when they started putting airbags in Corvettes. But uh, the fact is, is a Corvette is just a tin can. <laughs> so, um, uh, and also a Corvette, you're laying down flat farther in the seat, you know, whereas you're not up as high, you're very low to the ground. Okay, so steering wheel in the chest, we're gonna have chest trauma. Now that I've kind of gotten off on that tangent for you, blunt injuries, and uh, a lot of times they, when you get blunt injuries, moving vehicle accident. Uh, it's very important to note, which they brought this out, which, it's brilliant. Typically, you're going to have multiple associated injuries. So yes, if we have an injury to the chest, then you know you're looking at pericardial tamponades and tension pneumothoraxes and blah blah blah, all this stuff. But if we have any type of wound to the heart or those big vessels, then uh, if that was enough impact to damage them, then there's probably other injuries that are going to be. Uh, that are going to have to be triaged. You know, what, what do we need to work with first? If you have a diagnosis uh, for a heart, aortic, great vessel injuries, how are we going to find them? How are we going to be able to determine a diagnosis? The most common ways is they're going to do a chest x-ray. Of course, that's going to give us information right away. And if they're coming into the ER, you know, they can bring the chest x-ray and boom, hit you real fast. Uh, CT scan and MRIs take a little bit more time, right? But uh, very common used. Uh, two different types of imaging for different reasons. Transesophageal, transesophageal echocardiograms can be done and they can do contrast um, angiography if they need to. Uh, but cardiac wounds may use uh, cardiopulmonary bypass when they do procedures on them. So that's always predominantly, uh, if they go in to do surgery, then they're going to say whether or not they put, uh, uh, you know, cardiopulmonary bypass. And they usually, these usually do. So I think that's supposed to say wounds and not woods. Okay, that's typo on my part. Uh, if you do a, a cardiotomy, uh, what does that actually mean? It, you're going to open up the heart, you're going to look around, and you're going to remove a foreign body, or it could be a thrombus. Okay, so uh, uh, that is usually built in to a lot of the codes going and looking around. Okay, so now that we're know, we know we're going to be working with wounds and what. Uh, part of the anatomy that's involved, let's go look at some of the codes. So first thing to note, and sorry, I've got my crochet hook up here, you know, you already probably know I can't talk without having my hands move or have something in my hand. Um, so if we do uh, wounds of the great vessel and vessels and heart, notice that these are going to be all inpatient only procedures, right? So what credentials will be working with these and pulling these codes, they're gonna be uh, inpatient coders that'll be doing this, or you may be auditing them, but they have to, they'll, they'll be uh, in the OR inpatient only, no outpatient surgery. This is all traumatic injury codes. So again, this isn't a person having a heart attack. This isn't a person that has a congenital malformation of the heart or one of the vessels. This is a person that has some type of traumatic injury. So what constitutes a traumatic injury? So we've been using the example of uh, an MVA, but, you know, it, it could be other things that um, is traumatic, meaning it's an injury that uh, normally wouldn't happen on its own. 
All of these procedures have a 90-day global period. Just thought I'd throw that out there because it was mentioned in the Z Health education in that text. And so the codes for the traumatic injuries, the first code that we're going to look at is the kind of the base codes, 33300. Now, we're going to use this code for repair of a cardiac wound, and we're not going to put the person on bypass. Right. And then if we use 33305, same thing, repair of a cardiac wound. However, notice that it, this is with car, uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. Everything after the semicolon with the CPT codes you want to highlight. And if there's something specific within that that you want underlined that it needs to pop, then do that. So this is with, underlined with, highlight cardiopulmonary bypass so that when you go and look at these codes you're going to be able to say oh no they did not use bypass so I know that I'm not going to use 33305 uh, and look it'll tell you real quickly you're going to be able to see the ones that are without and the ones that are with right you don't have to lose your place and be using your finger you're going to be able to scan really quickly and find the proper code rule out those codes really quickly and this is perfect for testing purposes as well guys now we have just repair of a cardiac wound and we what do we need to know did they or did they not use cardi cardio uh, pulmonary bypass that's always in the documentation next 33310 you did a cardiotomy and again we're just going in and looking predominantly that's what that that's why I told you on the previous slide you're doing exploratory and we know that why do you do a car uh, cardiotomy they're looking for foreign bodies uh, or a thrombus and same thing the difference between 33310 and 33315 is that um, the cardio bypass now just a little caveat here 33315 is out. That code has actually been um, deleted and there's new codes. So I put that on another slide. But I, I um, it was actually replaced by three more codes. So um, I didn't correct it on this slide. I corrected it on the other slides. So just heads up, 33315, you're not going to find in your manual. Right? And if you do find it in your encoder, you're in the wrong year. So make sure you're in the proper year because that code should not show up. All right, so the difference between those two is uh, with or without bypass. And note that um, there was a bunch of guidelines on 33315. Ultimately, I think what they did was they broke up those guidelines and made three other codes. So now we have uh, 16, 17, and 18 to, to use for um, the cardiotomy. 33320, if we're just going to do a suture repair of an aorta or a great vessel, which would be the superior inferior vena cava, uh, note after the semicolon it says without shunt or cardiopulmonary bypass. So we're not doing the, the bypass, but we're not putting a shunt in either. Then that's the right code. You pick the right code. Notice that when we go to 33321, what's the difference? It's with shunt bypass. And then with the 33322, it's with cardiopulmonary bypass. Doesn't do the shunt. All right, so these are, we're not done. We've got a couple more codes that we're going to look at. Uh, 3330. We're going to put in a graft, insertion of a graft, and same, same area, aorta or great vessel, without shunt or cardio uh, pulmonary bypass. So we're, we're putting in a graft, but we're not going to use a shunt or bypass. And then when we're going to use bypass, three, 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 four threes and a five. I'm going to do that wrong. So you're inserting a graft. All right. That's the codes that we're going to give examples of. This is stuff that, um, one, I want to show you how to, to, to bat technique those codes, right? And then you're going to end up 
kind of bubble in all of these codes too because what sets them apart? They're traumatic injury codes. So you're gonna be able to bubble all of those codes that we just talked about. And then you can write off to the side, inpatient only, traumatic injury. And you can, it's kind of a no brainer to know that it's a 90 day global period, but also uh, wanna know that you they can also, if you're uh, assistant surgeons are in there and you need also have a co-surgeon if you have the documentation that shows that those are all approved. So here's an example. And again, this example comes from Z Health. So when we give them full attribution and I want you to go out and purchase this text because if this is an area that you are coding or you're interested in coding, brilliant. There is no other education that I found that is good as these guys uh, and user friendly <laughs> because I'm telling you when you look at that text and it's it's heavy on the pocketbook too, but it's worth every single penny. You are gonna flip through that text and you're gonna think, oh no, but they make it so easy. The only thing I can think of that would make it a better text if it was color coded, but um, people don't have brains that pop like mine. And, and as you know, uh, uh, that I have issues with that. My husband was telling me the other day that I was looking around at something and, and he said, what, what is it? He says, you've got that squirrel. <laughs> look about you. I do have that. And I have a problem when I'm reading and trying to learn because I, my brain goes everywhere when I, because when I think of, uh, when I see MBA, my brain immediately goes to all the possibilities. And I want to know where was the patient, you know, where, where they drive her, blah, 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 all this other stuff. And it's not really pertinent to the op report or what I'm coding <laughs> because I don't need to know that part. But when you work in the ER, you know all that part. Or when you do the ambulance, that's all that stuff you're reporting. So my brain's out doing this like, okay, rein it in, rein it in. All right, so let's, let's look at this example because it's really, really good. And this is how they teach it, which again, mm, you're not gonna find better teaching than this. Um, an MVA, patient is diagnosed with an ascending aortic injury. So now we know specifically where on the aorta that the injury occurred, okay? Because you have, it comes up off the heart, it arches, the aortic arch, and it goes like that. The approach via a median uh, sternotomy, and also that's all included in the code. So you don't code extra for them cracking the chest and getting in there. Cardiopulmonary uh, cardio bypass is performed. Now, that is important because we already established on all of those codes that we need to know. Are they putting a stent? Are they using a bypass? Right. And right there it tells you it's performed. But then look at what they do. They tell you in brackets, hey, by the way, when you're coding this, no additional code is needed for that because that's included in the code. An insertion of a uh, uh, Dacron graft is accomplished to complete the repair. So we've inserted a graft, so the code's 3335. Chest tubes are placed during closure of the sternotomy. And by the way, no additional code for that. Why do you think that is? Because there are codes for putting in these um, uh, these chest tubes for draining, drainage tubes. Well, it's because if you go in there and you crack the chest and you're working on uh, these, uh, the heart and these vessels and stuff, you have to put a drain in. You just do, okay? You don't traumatize the inside of the body. It's like, it's like uh, taking a, a, a skinned knee and expecting that when you take the hide off, of, you know, or do anything abrasive to the skin, that it isn't going to drain or bleed. It's going to do that, right? So, um, and we don't want a pool of uh, that fluid building up. We need it to be able to drain out. So the proper code for this scenario is three, 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 five four threes and a five, because we inserted a graft. Where did we insert it? Well, they told us specifically, but aorta or great vessel, kind of all lumped in together and with cardiopulmonary bypass. So um, this particular op would uh, be much longer than this, but everything else would be fodder. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. Another example, which was really, really good. All right. So this patient, it has uh, a patient with a pericardial effusion undergoes a pericardiocentesis. Oh, that's not supposed to be Grank blood is noted. It's supposed to be Frank blood is noted. It's a specific color of blood, <laughs> not Grank. Oh boy, do I have typos tonight. I'll go in and check those. And so I can fix that. And um, the people in the club won't have to worry about my misspelling. Maybe you guys should find any errors that I misspelled and put them in the comments and uh, not to make me feel bad, just to make me better, right? Because when we make mistakes, it makes us better. So this is supposed to be Frank blood is noted. If you don't know what Frank blood is, what I would encourage you to do in the club, go out, do some research, put it in the comments so that you can tell everybody else what you learned. And then the next time you uh, go into work or you're with any of your peers or colleagues, you can know, you can drop Frank blood was noted in the op report. So, and, it, and, it, and, again, and again, it has a specific meaning. So a pericardial drain is placed via small incision. Okay, that is 33017. And when Z Health does their education, they put the code right there in the scenario. Brilliant. Do to ongoing bloody drainage, decision is made to perform exploration. Okay, so a median sternotomy is performed. Note, that's included. We're not coding for that. Uh, followed by an incision of the pericardium. Now, the pericardium is that little sac around the heart. The cardiac perforation is identified. So again, when you see that color of blood or that specific type of blood, that has, they, they know kind of what that indicates. And um, since it continues, then they know, hey, we got a problem. We got a perforation somewhere. And sure enough, we have a little perforation in the cardiac um, area. It's identified and a cardiopulmonary bypass is not utilized. So they don't have to switch them over to bypass. However, the perforation is overseen with a figure uh, eight stitch and um, they close it up. So they do the repair. And the code is 33300 for that. So now the code that would have been used but was deleted was 33015. But they expanded that code and, and used, um, let's see, 1617 and 18, I think. Uh, so pericardial drainage with insertion of indwelling catheter, percutaneous, including fluoroscopic and or ultrasound guidance when performed, okay? So that means, you know, it doesn't matter if they didn't say that. Note here, after the semicolon, you're going to highlight six years uh, and older without congenital cardiac anomaly. So what is that, what is that telling you? First of all, the other codes are for people that are younger than six years, right? That's why they expanded that. And so underline that, six years and older. So if this is being done to an adult or just about anybody, unless they're younger than six, that's the code to use. Also, it's noted, this is a trauma code. It's without congenital cardiac anomaly. This is, this happened so, uh, it, it, but it wasn't because the heart, there was something wrong with the heart. They weren't born with a problem in the heart, okay? Because if they were, and it was a congenital cardiac anomaly, it would be another code. It wouldn't be a trauma code, okay? So then uh, we go back and we inserted a graft. So that takes us back to the 33330 insertion of a graft um, uh, or great vessel without shunt or cardiopulmonary bypass because we did the stitches. We put something in the heart that normally wasn't there. Another MBA. Ooh, I like these. I already told you I like these. Okay, uh, we have an MBA patient with injury caused by deceleration type mechanism. They were in a car and sudden stop, bam. Okay, uh, an aortic disruption 
is diagnosed by CT scan. And remember we talked about earlier, what are some of the ways they do chest X-rays, they do CT scans, they do MRIs, and they do um, angiograms to, to try to see what the um, injury is. So we know this is trauma, so we're gonna use this trauma codes. In the OR, a thoracotomy is performed with simple aortic cross clamping technique utilized. Now this is a specific type and in the Z Health book they give you a lot, they explain all of this if you're not familiar. And that's another reason why I'm so thrilled with this text because it goes above and beyond to explain the behind the scenes and I like to do that. Now I don't want to just tell you why this code is used, I want to explain why that injury occurred. Thus you would use this code. That's why I told you all that stuff about an MVA and what they look for the ER doc is going to look for, right, and what they're thinking. And the, the trauma surgeon that's going to be operating, they want to know. They're going to be asking the ER doc, hey, what happened? Because they then they know what to expect or to look for any other injuries, you know, that, that are likely to occur at the same time. How do they know all of this stuff? Statistics that you help them collect by um, coding. That's why we code anyway, right? Uh, so they did the uh, cross clamp. A cross clamp time is 24 minutes. Dissection reveals a partial transection and after debridement of the edges, wait, what are they doing? That means we got, we got an injury, right? But it's, think of it like, uh, it's not a nice tear. It's not a laceration. This is an injury. This is a tear, poof, you know, it's like, bam. If you've, have you ever, no, you probably never have. <laughs> I started to give you this really graphic. Okay, I'm going to give it to you anyway. So a, um, uh, have you ever seen a person that hit their head? And I don't mean they fell down, but blunt force trauma, bam, to the skull or skin. What it does is it doesn't fillet the scalp and everything, but it just kind of like explodes it like this, you know. Um, and so uh, when you have all of those little edges and stuff, you can't just sew that together. So what they do is they will debride the area, right? And make it nice and straight so that they can pull it together and get a nice line. Several reasons why they do that. It heals better, but um, also they're not gonna miss any spots. Now, this is the basic sewing technique too, if any of you sew, right? We can't, it's really hard to sew this together. So what do we do? We cut all that off and we sew this together, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's kind of what they're doing. All right, so that's why they're debriding of edges. And that's all included in the code. A decision is made to proceed with the primary repair. Uh, thus, the right code is gonna be 33320. There is no evidence of paraplegia post-operatively because it can happen, right? And so that code, 33320, is suture repair of aorta or great vessels. Doesn't matter which ones that were done. This is the same trauma code for aorta or those great vessels without a shunt or cardiopulmonary bypass. Okay. So they were able to do the repair. The debridement, all of that stuff doesn't matter. You know, it it is... Um, included in the care, in the code. So don't overthink it. That is one of the problems that I know when you get into a new specialty uh, that you're coding for or you're a newer coder, you, you're all excited because you get to assign all these codes and you end up, you know, no, we don't have to uh, code for the, you know, thoracotomy or, or the open in the chest or everything. That's all included because it's always done with this procedure. Okay, if it's commonly done with it, yeah, it's probably included. All right, guys, this is going pretty fast. I notice we don't have any questions. So let's go over some tips about the codes um, that I abstracted. Now, mind you, again, this is a tiny little snippet of this fabulous text. And um, um, it falls right into the, some of the questions we've been having come in to the club. So I was able to, to grab these and address them specifically, but these are, there was, there was a bunch of tips. 
But these are four that I felt were pertinent that you might not be aware of. And you can go straight to the Z Health book, which I encourage you to go purchase. And I've even put links for you to be able to do that. Uh, okay, so the first one. When you use 33300, and remember we, we did that, uh, for repair of a cardiac wound, it's got to be a wound trauma, without cardiopulmonary bypass, uh, you're going to use 33305 if they did cardiopulmonary bypass. Okay, so again, this is <clears throat> uh, a wound and very important. Did they use it or did they not? If they uh, did not use the bypass, then you're going to go with the OO code. If they did use the cardiopulmonary bypass, it's the O5 code. Very good. Do not, no, do not report codes 33310 or 33315 in conjunction with other uh, another cardiac procedure unless, underline unless, a completely separate cardiac incision is made to remove a thrombus from the heart. All right, so if you're going to go in, you're going to do a cardiac procedure. Unless they go in separately and do another incision and remove a thrombus, you do not report those codes with any other codes. That's pretty pertinent. Okay, so I would make myself little notes about that. The great vessels are uh, for codes uh, 33320 through 33335 include the aorta, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, pulmonary artery, and pulmonary veins. So when it says the aorta and great vessels, that's what it means. All of those other in those lists are great vessels, are considered great vessels because they're the largest veins in the body. Okay. Uh, this is all stuff that you probably learned in your anatomy classes. And if you didn't, it's a refresher. So again, don't be going and looking and, and saying, but it was the pulmonary artery. Don't I have to have a code for the pulmonary artery? Because it just says aorta and great vessels. No, the pulmonary artery is a great vessel. So is the pulmonary veins, the superior and inferior vena cava. Then they're all right there right there around the heart. Exposure via thoracotomy or median sternotomy is included. In other words, when we say exposure, uh, we're saying when they go in to look and explore around, that's all included in the codes because you got it. That's how you get in. You don't get to code for that extra. It's just assumed. And again, they don't care if you go in via a sternotomy or a thoracotomy, it doesn't matter. You got to get in there. Now, with some cardiac codes and vascular, you know, cardio interventional radiology and stuff, yeah, how you go in and stuff is, imper is important and you do code for that. Okay. But for these wound codes, trauma codes, no, it's all included. So be very conscious of that. These are four basic tips that I think you should just know. And uh, real easy to make these notes in your manual next to these codes to give yourself a, a heads up. So that's what the BAT technique is all about. Bubble highlight annotate technique. And when you make yourself little notes like this, you're annotating your manuals, okay? Uh, so kind of to round that up, uh, you need to know that one, these are inpatient procedure codes. So if you're coding, you know, surgical outpatient, you're not going to ever use these codes. Okay. These are codes that are going to be done in a facility that has a uh, cardiac uh, department and uh, a cardiologist that, that specializes in trauma. You know, uh, well, I don't know. There's so many levels and things, but um, these are, when you deal with trauma, then uh, unless you're in an area that only has like one facility or something, you know, in cities and things, they're going to have multiple. And uh, if they know that it's a moving vehicle accident with chest wound, they're going to take you to the hospital that they know has a cardiologist that specializes in this stuff. <laughs> um, they, 
they just know to do that kind of thing. Uh, so again, these are things that I think you need to notate. Uh, if this was beneficial, let us know. And all of our club members, you can ask the questions like this and we can do further health. There's some other great texts for different areas. Uh, you know, if I'm gonna do anything that has to do with the heart, Z health or, or vessels, Z health is your leader. There's others out there though in different um, body systems and um, you know, that, that um, will go and help you find a, a, and vet a really good text to give you further education. Uh, if you found something that you know to be extremely helpful in your specialty of coding, let us know so that we can also tell others as well. You can do that in the club. Uh, you know, make sure you provide a link and say, hey, this is where you can get it. Like you can go out to Elsevier or you can go to, you know, McGraw Hill, whatever, uh, Cengage, what, you know, if, if it's one of those uh, or another publishing company like Z Health in and above uh, in, in themselves. I'm kind of stumbling on trying how to say that, but I know you get what I'm saying. Our job is to educate you and help you uh, find the right resources and teach you how to use those resources. And I hope we did that tonight. So uh, we appreciate this question coming in. And uh, it's something I'm always excited about. Uh, let us know what we can do to help you and tell other people about the club. I think we're about done here. Yeah, any questions? I'm not seeing any questions come in. Not a problem because if you are in the club, you can go ask your questions anytime you want. And not only am I in there and other instructors and our coaches, but we have several subject matter experts. I happen to know that um, got a coder up in um, Dallas, uh, Kimberly, that is my go-to person uh, because I know she has been able to go take advantage of some of that training that Z Health offers and and um, uh, big fan of her helping me out. She's my go-to person. Z Health Publishing, that's how you get there. Find a code. I use them tonight. Uh, also, Z Health Publishing, if you go to their seminars and webinars, take advantage of their training. You can watch a, a webinar online and get training in CEUs, or maybe you can go to one of their seminars. Uh, they, I think they go other places, but uh, they're based out of Tennessee, Nashville. And then if you want to be a member of the Z Health Publishing Group, which I am, great information and articles come my way via email. There's a link to do that. Uh, special thank to Dr. Uh, Dunn, uh, who is the one one of the one of the authors of this particular text and uh, one of the reasons I really appreciate him is that not only is he a cardiologist but look at all his coding credentials that's the guy you want teaching you right and I think that's why Z health is is so good their um, their doctors their providers that that have written all this stuff are also coders and not just coders. Look, it's got the CCC and the CERC credential as well as inpatient CCS. So, all right, that's it. And last thing, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. This was a CCO club video. Go out and check out the club and join. All right, guys, bye-bye.